Hi, in one of the recent videos I have looked to review into this Android Architecture Blueprints project. And this project is basically showcasing how you could or you should maybe architect your Android application now in 2022. And as we looked at the beginning, there are many approaches that are actually shown in this project on different branches. So we have looked into the mine branch at the recent video. However, there are also many others. And what I would like to do today is to compare the mine branch, which is using the architectural pattern MVVM, with the branch that is using the MVI. Currently, I think MVI and MVVM are the two to-go approaches where MVVM is of course promoted by Google and MVI is the other solution. So here is the application in question. So it's the to-do application and basically both of these branches are um, implementing exactly the same thing, so there are no differences in the application. We can add something to it, we can complete the task, we can uncomplete it, we can go into the detail screen and remove. In the last video we looked into the screen with the list of tasks and I think let's just do the same thing today and look into it on both of the projects. So here I am on the mine branch and let's go into the tasks directory and you can see over here that we're having three different files. Um, we have the screen which is implemented with Compose, then we have a view model and we have this enum for filter types. Now in this project or on this branch with MVI, let's go also to tasks and you see that we have four files now. So we have our screen, which again is implemented with Compose, so that's more or less the same screen, just it has some differences to how it's implemented, but we will look into it. We have our view model and we have something called the producer, which it has some silt class action here and we have a function. We'll have a look into that in a moment. So let's start with the screen. In the MVVM version, except of all these imports over here, what do we have? We have the scaffold and then we have a view model which is created over here in the as an argument of the composable function. We are using the healed view model for that. And we get our tasks view model injected this way. And then this view model, we can see that we are using it. We have this task, uh, task top up bar over here. And this task top up bar has plenty of different callbacks. For each of these callbacks, we have over here a method on the view model we call. So, for example, on filter all tasks, we have view model and we do all set filtering and we add it. Mm, we add a value from the enum. Then on filtering active tasks, then we set okay set filtering to active task. But generally for setting filtering we have this one method. And then we have for example another method here to clear completed tasks. We have another method for refresh. And finally here in the body of this composable function we have our UI state which is coming from the view model which is a UI state which will be a flow which we collect as state with lifecycle. So lifecycle is taken into account over here, the activity lifecycle in this case. And then we just, so we have this tasks content and we just access uh, different parts of the state and we assign it to different composables down here or to the messages with the effects as we looked before. So the thing is that we have just one state that we are collecting. This is one object and then we are rendering the whole composable view based on that state. So if anything in this state changes, then also in this case we will re-render re everything over here. Or actually there is, a, there is an optimization that the recomposition is doing, so not necessarily the things that didn't change will be re-rendered, but but we have everything done through this one single output, let's call it an output. So now in case of the MVI project, 
let's see what happens here we have the screen and in this screen we have a very similar thing just notice that all these callbacks over here this time are calling only one function or method of this view model which is called process and that's actually the main difference between the two approaches over here so instead of having 10 different um, functions defined or methods defined on the view model that we are calling for specific actions we have only one method and we are just giving it some action so then prob probably somewhere in the codes of the view model we will look there in the moment there is like a huge one going over different actions so like it is an action for setting filter it is an action for creating completed tasks and here is an action for refreshing in other words like you can see that we still have our ui state it looks exactly the same so we can say that there is only one output from um, this view model but we also have only one way to input one input way into the view model so we only use this process with a predefined action to say please view model do something for me and then the model will do something for you and maybe produce a new state and then we'll update on the composables, the UI. Then in the next step, let's just go into the view model itself. And here is the MVVM version. So on the top, we have defined our state, which is the tasks UI state, and we have items, it's loading, filtering, UI info, and user message. If we look into the view model now over here at the MVI version we have exactly the same thing. So the actual state, the properties of the state don't change because well we have exactly the same application to handle. Here in the MVVM version we are extending view model which is the Jetpack Composites view model uh, provided by the Android team and we are using Hilt also to inject dependencies so the repository and the handle as we looked the last time and then in MVI version basically we have exactly the same so we're still using the view model from Jetpack let's have a look Android X lifecycle view model so it's exactly the same view model that we are using here however we can already see that this file over here is a lot shorter and the view model itself it only contains this free Vals. So we have a state producer, which is which has some function over here. We have the UI state, and the state actually comes from the state producer. And then we have this process, which contains this must be a method here or a function. Sorry. So we are assigning a function to this val over here. Back in the MVVM um, version. There is a lot more happening over here already at the very top but we have our ui state over here which is a state flow defined and yes and we have this combine which is combining this lots of different flows that we have defined over here and then when everything is together when anything any of these flows changes then we are basically emitting a new state already and then if we look down over here we have a bunch of different methods defined so what we've seen before in, in on this task screen over here we have the set filtering clear completed tasks and others and they are just defined over here so from view so the composable view is calling a function on a view model and then this function is actually doing some work for us though in case of clearing completed task here we have we are launching a coroutine inside of this coroutine we are actually clearing the completed tasks on the repository and then also we are just we want to show some snack bar so we have a method for that and we want to refresh in the end let's see yeah so here we set just a message to this user message which is a immutable state flow and when it changes then this changes and the ui gets re-rendered now if we go to this mvi project we don't have that we have just this process method which is also coming from state producer 
So everything is actually defined in this state producer. Therefore, we have to look into this task, uh, task state producer. Let's see what this is. And that's the fourth magical file that appeared over here in the tasks um, directory that we don't have in this MVVM project. So on top here we have defined this action. So it's a sealed class and then we have um, we're inheriting from this action to all the different actions that can actually happen on the view. So in this case we can clear complete task, we can show edit result message, we can set filter and we can set task completion. completion. And finally we also can show some snack bar or no, we actually defined that a snack bar message was already shown. Okay, so uh, it's always a problem with snack bars because it's one off message. So if you have a message in your state, um, then you don't want it to be rendered every time the state changes. So here they apparently um, fixed it in a way that it doesn't change every way that they just have another action and once um, a snack bar was already shown then they are just telling the view model okay mark it has already shown now and then we have the state uh, task state producer method or function here which are taking some coroutine scope in which we can run something or launch something then we have the repository. Okay, so we just get the dependencies that were injected to view model. And here we use some action state producer. What is this? All right, this is coming from somewhere, from utils. So this is some reusable method that we probably just take advantage on in every of the screens. And that actually have the state and the process methods defined over here. Let's go back, let's have a look what else do we have here. So this is taking the scope, it has the initial state and the initial state is just loading through because at the beginning we are loading um, the tasks. Then we have a mutation flow with a list of some dependencies, load lists. Okay, so there is a function right now which will load the list probably of tasks. We, ca we, we take the saved state probably and then we take the tasks from the repository. And the repository will do all this magic to the local and remote sources for us in here. So basically for everything that happened previously in a separate function we have in, inside of a view model here we have just a separate private function which is somehow being called on an action and where does this happen here so we have this action transformations which take a lambda and yes here we have this when so if we look back into the screen if we want to do something we have this process method and we give it an action dot refresh and then finally we reach this point where we actually get this action type and based on the action we execute something. So in case the action dot refresh was passed and then we just return a flow over here as well and inside of this flow we are doing the refresh tasks where before okay so we also can emit um, other values over here so before the action takes place we emit that we need to start loading right now once it finishes then we emit a mutation that it is not needed to load anymore so then we don't show the little spinner on the top in the application or any other indicator it can be anything else so at this point it looks a lot more complex um, compared to this MVVM solution where all we have to do is actually have a function. In a function we just call whatever we need, so a repository. If we would have use cases then we would call use cases over here. And then we just, uh, if, if there is any state change then we just uh, emit a state change. 
while in the MVI version, first of all, we need to have defined all the actions that are possible. Then we have this process and state um, defined even here through which we pass the data. So the data, so the data can come in through the processes with the actions defined what should happen and the data again gets out through the state and there should be no other way to interact with the view model in that case from the screen there's only the process and only the state so that was a quick look into um, some differences between this MVVM implementation and the MVI implementation as I said at the very beginning um, I've never really worked with MVI on a bigger project or even on a small project so I think maybe it would be interesting to make another video where we would look into how to implement MVVI because honestly when just going through all of it of all of this implementation I get like a vague idea of how it works so we have actions and then based on action we do something and then we produce a state it would be very interesting to actually implement it maybe I think there is a potential for another video for this apparently a small series. I think that's it for today. Bye bye.